14, uh, let me uh, begin by telling you that this is a lecture that may be broken up into more than one part. It's uh, dealing with the topic which uh, comes up uh, throughout our study. Uh, this is the final solution, but this is a closer look at what the final solution actually was. The final solution, as you read about it, is the code name the Nazis gave for what they considered the Jewish question. Um, the Jewish question was, of course, how to murder all the Jews of Europe. And the final solution was actually a culmination of many years of an evolving Nazi policy, starting with the earliest writings of Hitler uh, about the need for addressing what he felt was the Jewish question in Europe through the Nazis' actual attempts to induce mass immigration during the 1930s and to plan, at one point, a collective exile to some specific destination for um, the first few years, years of the war. By 1941, the mass execution of the Jews was the way that the plan was being carried out. In September of 1919, Hitler wrote his first uh, political document, let's say, his first statement, and uh, in it he addresses the Jewish question, as he calls it, which will eventually, he says, be solved by the total removal of the Jews from Europe altogether. Uh, it's to be executed, as he says, with the typical German thoroughness and efficient planning. Uh, Hitler was basically obsessed with the Jews and was determined to find a what he called final solution to get rid of the Jews permanently. Through the 1930s, Hitler believed that mass immigration was the answer to the Jewish problem. The anti-Jewish legislation, legislation was passed in Germany at a time when Hitler rose to power, uh, to national power in January of 33, and then to the outbreak of World War II in September of 1939. Uh, and all this was designed, of course, to convince and later to coerce the Jews into leaving the country. In January of 39, Hitler uh, spoke before the German parliament and he criticized the free world for not taking in the Jewish immigrants that he was trying to get rid of and warned that the consequences would be the uh, annihilation, to quote his words, of European Jewry. Now experts do debate whether that statement should be interpreted as a direct articulation of Hitler's intention to murder every Jew or whether it was just Hitler's manipulative uh, manner of leaning on the free world to take in the Jewish immigrants that he didn't want. When Germany invaded Poland in 1939, it launched World War II, and also an additional 1.8 million Jews came under the Nazi control. Hitler did not immediately order their extermination. Instead, a plan was formulated whereby all the Jews living with, under the jurisdiction of the Third Reich were to be exiled to a reservation near the Lublin district area in Poland, called the General Government. The Nazis tried to implement this, uh, what they called the Nisko and Lublin plan, but it never really came to fruition. And by the spring of 1940, it was clear that the Lublin program was no longer uh, going to be a viable answer to their perceived Jewish problem. As Poland did not have enough territory to absorb, um, to, to uh, spare for um, all the Jews. The next phase of the anti-Jewish policy, then, is introduced in May of 1940, and this was called the Madagascar Plan. The Madagascar Plan is a plan to, to deport all Jews of Europe to the island of Madagascar, which was a French colony uh, off Africa. However, the Germans were defeated in the Battle of Britain just a few months earlier, and it rendered their Madagascar Plan totally unfeasible. The Germans attacked their former ally, the Soviet Union, in June of 1941 and instituted what was called Mobile Killing Squads, or Eizansgruppen. Along with the regular army, police units, and the local collaborators, they immediately began the systematic murder of every single Jew in the Soviet Union. This was the first time that mass systematic extermination was being used as a method to solve the Jewish question. In July, Hermann Goering authorized the preparation of quote, the final solution, and at the end of 1941 into early of 1942, the Nazis established extermination camps, began deportations to them, and began to perfect their killing methods. 
The first gassing experiment was conducted at Auschwitz in September of 1941, and extermination camps at Belchek and Chelmo were then constructed in the late fall. Sobibar, Treblinka, and Majdanek and Auschwitz became extermination camps uh, or centers in the spring of 1942. And in the meantime, in December of 41, Hitler told his intimate circle of friends uh, that the murder was to be extended to include all German Jews, thereby including all European Jews in the plans for the final solution. At the Wannsee Conference in January of 1942, the German government and the SS met, uh, leaders met to coordinate their efforts to exterminate the Jews of Europe. And from then until the end of the war in 1945, the final solution was official Nazi policy. And that policy meant one thing and one thing only, death to every Jew in Europe. We'll next be looking at the difference between just concentration camps, extermination camps, uh, what's the difference between the two uh, in the next lecture, and I'll also take a look at um, a company that was instrumental in implementing this, a company by the name of IG Farben. Um, basically, I can give you a little bit of an introduction right now to IG Farben, because we do have a few minutes left here. IG Farben produced synthetic rubber and uh, synthetic fuel from coal. They were guaranteed large purchases by the government if they set up factories at the uh, concentration camps, slave factories. Uh, in a nutshell, they used uh, Jewish labor, uh, slave labor in their factories, and IG Farben is the company that manufactured the Zyklon B poison gas that was used in the gas chambers of the concentration camps. They had a factory producing this at Buna Manovitz, which was the industrial slave labor camp uh, attached to Auschwitz-Birkenau, Auschwitz-Birkenau being three camps, Auschwitz-1, the prison camp, Birkenau, the death camp, and Bunomanovitz, the industrial uh, complex, along with many other sub-camps or sa satellite camps that existed at the same time. So um, that gives you the insight onto uh, what history calls the final solution. There is no one written order where Hitler orders the final solution to be implemented. However, uh, by his approval and going along with everything, and uh, he was basically giving his nod of approval and made it very clear, of course, as I said in his early writings, that the Jews of Europe were uh, to be eliminated if Europe was ever to be free of what they felt was the uh, Jewish scourge or um, uh, plague that had uh, infested Europe. <clears throat> that being the Jewish uh, people, I hesitate to say the Jewish race because as you know, Jews are a religion, but the Nazis of course made it into a racial ideology by saying that the Jews were an inferior race. With that, I will bring this uh, lecture to a close and begin the next lecture in a couple of moments on concentration slash extermination camps.